Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're gonna do today is not work on the fuel injected Sportster, but we're working on my buddy Noah's shovel head. So, uh, I'm going to rebuild an SNS Super B carburetor. That's B is in Bravo, Bravo is in Bravo, Steve. That was a great video. I'll like and subscribe down below. So, uh, we're just gonna do a full tear down on this. We're gonna soak this, no real special tools. Clean out really good. Got a actual SNS rebuild kit. Um, I'm all about saving money, but for things like this, they have gaskets with fuel lines and stuff like that. Uh, I highly recommend buying the actual name brand one. Don't buy the off-brand ones. You never know what you're going to get with gaskets and O-rings with the off-brand ones. So, got an SNS rebuild kit for our SNS Super B. Now we're going to take it over the bench. We're going to take it apart and put it in the parts the carb cleaner can and uh, let it soak for a few days. And then we'll pull it out. Blow it out with carb cleaner, all the little ports and passages and everything, and compressed air and all that jazz, and then put it all back together with new parts and gaskets. And it should be good to go. So, let's move over the bench and take a closer look. First thing we're going to do is take the drain plug or main jet access plug off the float bowl. Holy crap! This is going to be a thing. Is that right there? And I encourage you as you do this, take pictures, label things, put them in Ziploc bags, put them in little parts trays. Luckily, as I'm doing this, I have a video record of how it comes apart. See if there's any gas left in it. There's dirt left in it. Now we're going to take the float bowl off. I'm going to take a nice, hefty flathead screwdriver, break these free. Now, always try to use the screwdriver that fits in there best that you have. Um, that way you don't strip out the screws. And especially when you get into internal stuff here, uh, you're going to find a lot of the screws or jets or stuff or brass. So it's a soft metal, so it's easy to damage them. Nobody wants that. Screw. Take that one out. Give it a quick inspection. Make sure that's all the screws that should pop off of there. Woo! That gasket may have it baked on there. Once the gasket breaks free, wiggle it up. It might be on pins or something. It should slide up off of there. There's half and half of our gasket. We're going to want to clean that off of there. Uh, there's definitely some crud down the bottom of this. Um, the jets are extra cruddy and strangely look like they've been heated up. Hmm. Interesting. So first we'll just peel all this old gasket off of here. If you have to, get a gasket scraper or razor knife. Now from here... We'll scrape that in a minute. Now from here, we're going to try and take the main jet out of this, out of the emulsion tube here. Oh yes, there we go. Take our main jet out, set it to the side. Take a wrench. Break our emulsion jet free. Our emulsion tube, sorry. Uh, that was absurdly tight, and that is full of crud. Uh, that bike probably was not going to run very well at all. Set that off to the side. Now from there, we'll take our intermediate jet out. Also well crudded up. 
Give it a quick inspection. That appears to be everything except the chunks of gasket. So from here, we're going to take our choke off, which is what this is. Technically, it's an enrichment circuit, but we just call it the choke. Slide that right up out of there. That's good. This is our idle mix screw. Um, not a bleed screw like on a Makuna or Key and Carburetor. Uh, so we're just going to back this all the way off of there. Remember, there's a spring there. There may be an O-ring on it. May or may not be an O-ring. Hmm. I don't see an O-ring. Uh, we'll check the explode diagram, but there's a little spring here. This little pin, or this little tip there. That's going to need to be super clean, because that is what regulates the flow at idle. You want to be careful you don't damage the aluminum, so this is a gasket surface. Now, you're eventually going to dispose of this. However, I would set it off to the side. Um, that way you can match up to the new one to make sure you got the right size, because it's only as good as the guy that put it in the box. So at this point, it's pretty well stripped. If the bike was running, you're just trying to clean it up a little bit, um, this is really as far as you have to go. However, this thing is pretty rough, so we are actually going to take it apart fully and take the throttle plate out of this thing, because there's these little felt gaskets in each end on the throttle plate, and we're going to replace those too. Not always necessary, but you know, we like to do things excessively here. So, don't stab yourself in the hand with a screwdriver. Then from there, loosen that piece up, and you should be able to get behind it, and whoop. Slide that sucker right off of there. Okay, now the challenging step. Down in here is the throttle plate, and usually these screws are absurdly tight and often just baked in there. So try and break them free. One came free. If they don't come free, what we're going to do is we're going to soak it in the parts washer or carb cleaner for a day or so, and then we'll come back to it. Because maybe that will help remove whatever's down there. And again, this is a time to make sure your screwdriver tip fits in there perfectly. If it doesn't, grind it down. Cost of screwdriver is cheaper than a new carburetor. Okay, now we're starting to strip out that screw. We don't want that. Okay, so we're just going to stop right there because that screw is uh, starting to strip out a little bit. So, we're basically going to call that good right there. I can pop this little spring off of here. That's going to be hard to put back on. Then from there, we'll scrape the rest of our gasket off and then we'll throw it in our gallon of parts washer cleaner. Choose to use a razor knife with this. Make sure you keep it really flat. Don't do this or you'll cut into the aluminum. And then it won't seal anymore. Lefty Lucy, that thing on out of there. Whole pin and everything comes out with it. When that pin comes out, the float comes out. And the float plunger, right there, comes out with it. You don't have to put this in the parts cleaner. Um, but I would do this, uh, especially if you don't have another one of these, but you'll see like a black surface on this, on the tip of this thing here. Uh, there's like a Teflon or some other coating, uh, in that probably causes cancer in the state of California. Uh, but that right there, it's like a rubbery Teflon, whateverness, but that is what seals the fuel off. 
when the float goes all the way up, it pushes this down. That seals the fuel off. So if this is damaged in any way or worn, you're definitely going to get one again, new one of these. Otherwise, your carburetor will not, the fuel won't turn off and the float rises, and it'll randomly flood out your engine. That won't be fun. So yeah, you should be able to see through this. You can see all the crud down here in the bottom of it. So from there, take our gallon of carburetor cleaner. You can get this stuff at most auto parts stores. I like the Gunk brand. Why? Because they're local. But anyways, sometimes there's a little basket in here that you can pull your jets in. I apparently did not put the basket back in it. So we're going to drop a carburetor down in there. Careful with this stuff with your eyeballs. Then we're gonna drop our float bowl down in there. Then our emulsion tube. We're gonna fish that out later. And uh, yeah. Wait, what about our main air jets? Oh, there we are. And our intermediate, intermediate jet. If I had the little basket, these would be way easier to fish out of there. Um, so I'll probably just have to stick my hand down in there. Probably don't wanna do that. It's probably bad for your skin. Whatever. Whatevs, yo. This sucker, too. Yeah, while we're at it, why not? All right. Cool. Put the lid back on. Seal her up. You don't... You don't have to actually seal it. I just like to seal it, because that way I can come out here in a few hours and give it one of these. Uh, then go back to whatever it is I was doing. So, we'll check on this in about 24 hours. Maybe two days, depends on what I feel like doing tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll take it all out of there and then we'll hose it all out with carb cleaner. That's all I got for right now. All right, so it's been here for a few days. Man, look at all that crap coming off this thing. Holy Jesus. Might be time for a new thing carb cleaner. Man, there's a lot of crud on that carburetor. Holy crap. Luckily, it does seem to be cleaning up pretty easily. All seems to be broken free. So we'll fish the jets out of here. Probably would have been a good time to use a strainer or something. There's our plug. This is like a crappy fishing game here, I tell you. There's that. Idle screw. Well, there's only one option. All right, now we're gonna go wash our hands. Put the lid back. Do this in a well ventilated area. Wear eye protection. Also, be mindful of actual jewelry. Uh, white gold reacts to carburetor cleaner, gives you chemical burn. Hurts like hell. Don't do that. All right, throttle plate removal. Okay, now that it's sat for a few days, 
We're going to try and get this last throttle plate screw out of there. All right, that one seems to fit the best. So we're going to push down on it with all we got. Okay, that is not turning. Shite. So normally I would use an impact driver on stuck screws, but then I might bend the shaft and then it'll be really hard to get out. So we're going to try some needle nose vice grips. These are the worst vice grips I ever bought. They have a little adjuster right there. Good lord, don't buy those things. And it's a left-handed thread. This is stupid. I think it turned. Oh man, this thing. Shit. God. Now we're going to step it up to a larger bit. Try and drill the head right off of this thing. Nope, too big. So here's how I hope you don't ever have to do it. Woo. There's the throttle plate, which is actually reusable if you sanded these scratches out that I put in with the vice grips. Uh, the shaft, not so much. Another part of the shaft. Aha! All right. Take all these pieces. Throw them away. Take this towel you have down here with all your chips on it. Swap that out. All right. So first thing we're going to do is reassemble our carburetor body. So we have our intermediate jet here, and we're going to take a torch tip cleaner, and we're going to clean this out. However, be very careful. There's a file surface on, surface on there, and that can easily take some metal off, and then you'll rejet your jet. Nobody wants that. So be very delicate when doing this. Nice light touch. Don't go crazy. After you're done, give it a hose out. Also, we're gonna make a note. It's 29 and a half intermediate, which actually sounds pretty good. Take your best jet screwdriver, thread that in there. Don't kill it. Just tighten it up. Now, main jet emulsion tube. Again, find the torch tip cleaner you just had in your hand. I usually snake all these out there. These ones don't go all the way through, but usually you can like hold them up the light and see all the way through. You can definitely do it with the center. Make sure she's all nice and clean up in there. 
this is where that little handy dandy hose on your can of carburetor cleaner comes in play because you can then hose out the middle of it right in there which we're doing off camera <clears throat> all right from there thread this piece back up in there hang on before we get further let's open the emulsion the rebuild kit and make sure we're not reusing things that we don't need to reuse and it does not look like we are so go through your mess of vice grips here throw this one in the trash find your half inch wrench and tighten this up again don't kill it just tighten it up you just don't want it to vibrate free. That's it. Now we're going to take our main jet. Blast that out with carburetor cleaner. The can that I just had in my hand that I lost. There it is. And if you're wondering... This is a 68. So 29 and a half, 68. Sounds pretty good for a stock shovel. At least a good starting point. It's gonna vary by exhaust. And, uh, yes, displacement of the shovel, but you know. <clears throat> All right, that's in pretty good shape. Next step from there, it's gonna be reinstall this throttle plate. I just have to remember which way this goes. There are, there is like a little QR code here, uh, which I don't know if that's probably not going to work. But there's a QR code and it has the instructions in it for s and S. I'll put that in the link in, uh, below in the video in the description. So in the s and S instructions, they're telling us to ream out the holes that are already in this carburetor body. Um, however, it says a letter N drill bit, which is also 302 diameter. But man, this is like a perfect fit in here already. So I'm gonna guess someone already did it. So we're gonna slide that in there. Just kinda, whoop, slide in there like so. Sorry. Whoop, slide in there like so. Make sure slot, make sure your slots go to uh, what would be the front uh, if it was mounted on the motorcycle. Or if you're looking at the intake of the carburetor, it would be the right side. So we're going to slide that in there, and then we're going to take our throttle plate, slide it down in there, and this son bitch is barely going to fit. Slide it back in there. This is going to be a really tight fit, and everything is going to have to be perfect to get it down in there. I don't know how much you can see, but right now I'm fighting with getting the screws lined up. And once you get them nice and lined up, it's going to take a couple tries. Problem is you're kind of working blind here. There we go. Once we get it nice and lined up, it opens and closes freely. So then we can open our new our rebuild kit here. Life experience. Use a razor knife. Don't rip the plastic open. You end up just losing things everywhere when you do that. So from here, we can take our two little screws here, find out their Torx bits. I mean, it's better than a flathead and a brass screw. So we're going to find the Torx bit that fits that, and then we will reinstall those in there. Uh, in this case, this is a T15 Torx bit. So we're going to start the first one in loose. And we'll start the other one in there. We're going to check the instructions again. Because I just realized maybe this thing, uh, maybe it needs a thread locker. Always good to check the instructions on this stuff. So I was kind of debating on this. We're going to use a little bit of medium strength thread locker. 
I know people like to call out by color, but uh, some brands like to use different colors. And we're just, I mean, just a wee little bit there. Just enough, because, man, I don't want to be wrong and have one of these screws fly down the intake of his shovel head. I'm pretty sure that won't go over well with the engine or the engine's owner. Whoop, didn't need that much, but uh, yeah, there we go. Dab a little bit of that off on the rag there. I don't have torque specs for this, so I'm just going to tell you, tighten it up till it all feels like it bottoms out and seats in there. Don't kill it. It's just brass. There we are. Now, give this a nice spin. Make sure it's doing as it should be doing. Yes. So, I'm going to use the new spring. Then we're going to thread it back down in there. Uh, I know an s and is, um, I think on their Super E's, it's recommended to turn out one and a quarter. So we're just going to start with there. So thread in there until it stops. Don't kill it. Just thread in there until it stops. Back it out. One full turn. And then a quarter more. And we're just going to call that good for right now. Next, I'm going to take our emulsion tube. Or, uh, I'm sorry, not emulsion tube, our enrichment circuit, a.k.a. our choke. They're technically enrichment circuits, but it's a lot easier to call it a choke. Give it a bath. Check for O-rings. This did not have one. I feel like it should, but it doesn't. So we will thread that back down in there. And snug it up. Check for proper operation. All's well and good there. Next, reinstall the throttle spring. The throttle return spring. It's this little sucker right here. And remember, we had this uh, linkage on the other end. So, throttle return spring has a little dimple right there that it goes into. So you want to make sure, oh, and then find out you put the throttle shaft in backwards. Damn it. Hopefully Loctite hasn't set up yet. It did not. That's good. Take the throttle plate up and out of there. Throttle shaft out. Turn it over. Make sure the slot goes towards the spring catch notch thingamajig there. That'll be a lot more handy there, isn't it? Reinstall your throttle plate. I don't think this is directional. I mean, this is top and bottom, but I don't think it's um, directional. It's front and rear. Take your thread lock, take your uh, torque spits. We're gonna put another little dab of thread locker on there. Start each one of them back in there, just like before. Take your spring, hmm, this is kind of a pain, you know that? I 
There. Put that back in there. Take your long needle nose pliers. Grab the tab of this spring. Man, this thing is a pain. This is not an easy task. Okay, so we're gonna get it to where the spring just barely sits down on there. To where it barely sits in the flat. Now, take this tab here, bend around and past. Let it go up in there. Let it go up in the hole in the carburetor body. Then we can push the flat down in there. Now it actually springs closed and open. Now that it springs open and closed as it should. Whoop, just like that. You can then slide your stop on here. Slide it up to the mechanical stop. Take your flathead screwdriver. Not that one. Take one that fits the best. Oh, we have new screws. Match this up to the new screw in the rebuild kit, which is this one right there. Thread that sucker down in there. Hooray for new screws. This is why we buy name brand stuff. And tighten her up. Don't kill it. Make sure it grabs the shaft. Test it out. Cool. That part's all rebuilt. Next. So pretty much that's your entire carburetor body right there. Everything is good to go and it's pretty much all ready to be reinstalled. So set that to the side. Now we'll move our attention to the float bowl. Uh, apparently we got a new fitting in here with the uh, rebuild kit. So probably should have checked that out before I put in the parts washer because now I have to figure out how to get this sucker apart. Put the cap back on your thread locker. Unscrew this up on out of there. Now it might seem odd to replace this and the only real reason we're replacing this is because the float plunger sits down in here and we want to make sure that seals off very nicely. Um, in the bottom of this, that mating surface could be corroded on the old one, so take your new one. Make sure your surface is clean. Installer right on there. Again, no O-rings. Whatever. Hopefully it all seals. Tighten it up. Again, don't kill it. <clears throat> but make sure it's tight. From there... We can then take the bottom of our float bowl plug, float bowl drain, or main jet access, and clean all the crud off the bottom of that thing. Give it a quick bath. And, <clears throat> again, no gasket. All right, whatever. Very limited gaskets here on the B. Tighten that right up there. Boom. Now we're ready to reinstall the float. Make sure your float's all nice and clean. I gave this one a bath of carburetor cleaner earlier, so it's in pretty good shape. And then we're gonna take our, we had a replacement screw here somewhere. I thought we did. Maybe not, nope. We reuse the old one of these. Make sure that's good and clean. Take your new float plunger. Why do we have two? That's interesting. So they gave us two. So apparently there's two styles. Uh, this is our old one here. This is our new one. They both have that undercut on them 
So we're going to take the one with the clip, set that to the side, and we'll take the one with the undercut, slide it on there. Here's a tip. When putting the float in, make sure you put proper side up. These little eyelets here need to be pointed up, not down. Otherwise, you'll spend 15 minutes trying to figure out why the float adjustment is absurdly far out. So, even professionals make mistakes. So don't get discouraged if you make one. Now you can actually see the pin go in there. Look at that. Er, tighten it up. Now it's a lot closer to where it should be. Now, with this plunger pushed all the way down here with my right thumb, sorry, my left thumb, um, what's going to need to happen is this float, we're going to have to bend it a little bit, there we are. This float should be 1 32nd of an inch below the gasket surface. So we will put a straight edge across here, and we will measure down to the top of the float. All right, so I have my calipers set to 31 thousandths, 32 thousandths. You can see I got the little tab extended out there down the bottom. So I'm going to set it on here, and it might be hard to... And then we're going to set it, when I press this all the way down, this should be 31 thousandths below. It's a little higher right now, so what we're doing is we're bending this metal tab here. Sometimes you can get in here with your thumb and then just bend it. I think I just bent it a little bit. Oop, that was too much. It's not a very precision uh, thing there. So, keep doing it. First, you're going to want to eyeball it close. So we're going to try a couple times until it's good and seated. And we're going to take our caliper here. And I probably cannot position that to where you can see it. But if you take my word for it, right there... I guess you can't really see it with light, sorry. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it. But, the big point is, with my finger pushing down on the float, this surface here is 1 32nd of an inch, or 31 thousandths below this gasket surface here. That is what we are aiming for. If you set it too high, this float is going to bounce up, and it's going to hit the bottom of the carburetor, and it won't seal off your jets. Or won't seal off your plunger, needle, and seat. So with that in mind, now we are ready to reinstall the float gasket. So, I set this thing on the bottom here. One of the important things you want to check is make sure it doesn't inadvertently plug any holes or anything. Stranger things have happened. Then, make sure everything lines up. Slide your float bowl right down on there. Then take your new screws that come with the rebuild kit Start each one of them in. Do not, I repeat, do not tighten them up. Do not bottom the screw out until all four are started in there. Because you're going to bind or pinch that gasket if you do it. And then this sucker is going to leak. So... Run them down in there until they each lightly seat. Go in a crisscross pattern. Alright. With them each seated, now tighten them up. Again, don't kill it. Just tighten it up. Enough that the screws will not vibrate out. boom there you have it again check to make sure everything is working properly as it should be you have your new gasket here you could reinstall this now though it's probably going to fall out uh, so really just hang on to this gasket this o-ring here until you're ready to put it back in the put it back on the engine actually I took it back this one's got a nice groove in it so it holds that o-ring nice and well if this won't stick in there, you can take a little general purpose grease and smear it on there, and it'll kind of work like a glue long enough to put this back up to the intake. And any grease that gets in the intake will just get sucked in the engine and burned off. Won't hurt anything. 
There's also gasket tack and all other kinds of comp you know products out there. Cool. Pretty much, that's it. Du, 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 du. Super B rebuilt Noble Moto. You're ready to go ride. That's all I got.